increases the yield of the uh, of the farms uh, as well as the quality of the produce in some cases as much as up to 50 to 100 uh, percent I would say access to water is number one. Uh, India, for instance, has about 52% of their farmlands under irrigation. Sub-Saharan Africa has 2%. Uh, and we all know that we have challenges of drought in some cases and floods in some cases. Uh, so dry season farming uh, will greatly enhance uh, productivity, both in terms of yield and in terms of the number of cycles that farmers can engage in, in farming. So that's one. And then of course, access to high yielding uh, varieties and critically as well, uh, access to modern agronomic knowledge. And then we need access to high quality seeds as well. The top food producing countries in the world today are using genetically modified uh, uh, seeds uh, for their production. This is something that we must, as a country, address. We must have access to the best quality seeds uh, to help us with drought resistance, to help us with uh, much, much higher yield than we currently have now. That's something we need to do if we will be food secure as a country. These, I would say, are the three key things that we need to improve on in Nigeria. We started uh, as a commercial farm. We were uh, given 2,000 hectares in Cross River State by the Cross River State government. And uh, the purpose was to cultivate rice as a commercial farm. However, by the time we went to the village, we found that much of that land was already occupied. Some houses were already built and in many of the places, the uh, community members were already farming on the, on the land. So we had uh, still a little bit to work on, but with time we discovered that um, the best way for us to be effective at what we were doing was not to dispossess the owners of the land, the community people, and take over the land in the name of commercial agriculture, but was rather to provide them all the services that they needed and uh, still be profitable in that process. So that's how we transitioned from being a commercial farm to uh, a service provider for smallholder farmers. If you look at where we are today, there are more women in the farms than men, far more. But when it comes to support from the financial sector, from governments and all of that, the men are far more. So we need to, at the very least, support people in equal proportion. And for us to be doing that, we need to provide at least 80% of our support as alluvial to women. And that's how we can actually reach a, a, a target of bringing up more, more women. And as you know, we recently trained 50 women uh, to be tractor operators, and they will go on to establish mechanization service uh, businesses with our support. And uh, I believe that will make a lot of difference because more of the people in the farms are women. So with women service providers, I believe that uh, more women will be able to access the services that we provide. If you look at the statistics, you find that there are as many, uh, many women, there are as many women as men, if not more, involved in smallholder farming. But when it comes to farmers who receive support, either from government or from banks or other institutions, you find that women are 
far outnumbered uh, by men. And so we have also taken a very deliberate approach uh, towards ensuring that there are more women receiving uh, our services than, than men. We did not have to convince them at all. Um, they, the MasterCard Corporation set up uh, the largest private uh, foundation in the world, which is the MasterCard Foundation. And the purpose of this foundation is to help create jobs and increase uh, financial viability uh, in the areas they work with, particularly in, in Africa and uh, they have an emphasis also on youth and, and women and uh, they saw the work we've been doing, they liked what we do and uh, for us also this was a great opportunity to partner with them to help them achieve their objective uh, which of course in the process also helped us in achieving our own objective. has made all the difference in, in terms of our reach. Uh, uh, we've been able to reach a lot more farmers than we would have uh, without this uh, partnership. For the farmers, uh, many of them, particularly during this uh, period of uh, COVID, uh, with all the supply chain challenges and the escalating costs of inputs, uh, have been able to access this uh, support which has greatly uh, enhanced the standard of living of their families and helped them to uh, address the shocks of, um, uh, of the situation that we have globally today. Um, we have uh, been working with smallholder farmers for a very long period now, uh, I think more than seven years but the numbers have dramatically increased after we signed the partnership agreement with the MasterCard Foundation to support 65,000 farmers over a two-year uh, period. Uh, afterwards, we also entered into another partnership agreement with IDH Trade uh, to support another 25,000 farmers. So the numbers are increasing. I believe they are in the region of 100,000 farmers now across 15 states in Nigeria. We are currently operating in Plateau, Benue, Nasrawa, Bauchi State, Kaduna, um, Kano, Dimension Kano already, Adamawa Taraba, uh, Cross River. Uh, I, I don't think we have a plan to expand across the Country. As a matter of fact, we might even uh, concentrate uh, uh, on fewer states, but do more in those, uh, in those states. And uh, we plan co collectively across the continent to reach 2 million farmers within the next uh, five years. There's a lot of interest in, in what we are doing uh, from global funds, but more importantly, from local financial institutions in the uh, different countries we are working in, including in Nigeria. There's a lot of uh, interest uh, from the financial institutions within Nigeria. 